Hello, everybody, and welcome to Written in Blood. My name is John, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Leaders of the Pack, a werewolf anthology. I'm not sure who the uh, editor of this is. It doesn't say on here, so I'm really not sure about that. Uh, but the one thing I want to say about it is, first of all, let's check out the cover, and I'm hoping the picture of this, uh, the cover's popped up already. Uh, you get a good look at the cover, and you, this should tell you everything you need to know about this book, and that this is not your... Uh, Twilight Team Jacob type of werewolves. Uh, in fact, if they're Team anything, they're Team Ravenously Hungry, and we're on Team uh, Gourmet Meal for these werewolves. And the other thing about this book that I liked about it is that, first of all, every story in this book is absolutely exciting. I mean, the worst one is a three-star rating for me. The rest of them are four- and five-star ratings. Uh, but the thing about it is, is it seems that every one of the stories in this book, they tie in in some way or another with novels or werewolf novels that the authors have written, such as um, the first story, the, De the Dead Brother situation by Glenn Rolfe is a tie in to Glenn Rolfe's Blood and Rain. Uh, Hunter's Moon by David Wellington is a tie in to his werewolf series, which was Overwinter and Frostbite. Actually, I think Frostbite was first, though, excuse me. So that was a tie-in to that. And then other ones are like uh, The Great Storm by T.W. Piper Brook. In fact, it says that it's in between books three and four of the Outage series by Piper Brook. Uh, Out of Nowhere, Outside of Nowhere by Ray Garten. Uh, that one, I believe, is a prequel to his Ravenous series. Uh, it kind of tells you a little bit about the events that happen up to the beginning of ravenous so and like i said uh and and some of these i'm not really sure about uh because i haven't read every single one of these werewolf novels that are associated with this but the thing about it is is like i said that this book is non-stop action i mean it's bloody it's gory it's fun i mean i just i just raced through it i mean i just ran through this book like it was like it was a house of fire that's what i did and uh i loved it uh I guess my rating on it would be, since, like I said, it has uh, the one story to me, which was, well, I'm not, you know what, I'm not going to name, you know, actually I will, uh, the uh, story, The Hybrid of uh, Bloodlines by uh, Nick Stead. That was really like, the only one that really didn't do it too much for me. It was good, but it was just like three-star level good. Uh, to me, some of the best stories, uh, one of the best ones I liked was, I believe it was called Lifeline by Paul Kane. And that's about a woman who has been abused by her husband or douchebag of a husband and she gets away from him. And then she finds out that she's different. Okay. And I'll leave it at that. Uh, the story about Ray Garten, which was said, what was it? Um, Outside of Nowhere was actually quite good. Uh, the story about David Wellington, uh, the, the, um, Hunter's Moon was actually really good and really exciting. But like I said, I think the story that did it the best for me was Lifeline by Paul, by Paul Kane. I just thought that story just ran on all cylinders. It just was just a werewolf story perfection. So that was my favorite from the book. Like I said, my least favorite from it would be, like I said, um, Hybrid Bloodlines by Nick Stead. I've got the table of contents right here, and I'm kind of referring to it on my Kindle. So... Yeah, for this one, I'm going to give it a uh, four-star rating, and I highly, I do highly recommend it, though. Uh, so if you're into werewolves and you want your werewolves to be vicious, rip off your face, tear out your heart, uh, uh, dig their nose into your guts and just eat your intestines out and everything else, this is the anthology for you. Four stars. I thank everybody for watching, and have a great night.